So today I was theorizing on the next format on Kishtira Tirlaments and I was thinking to myself, would it be a better idea for me to run the bestials, including, you know, Baldrick, which is the new support card from Photon Hypernova, or would it be a better idea to run the Kashtiras, including the new support from that set? The answer really isn't obvious because both of these engines have their pros and cons, but at the same time, they really don't mash too well with each other. Anyways, today my goal will be to provide you guys with as many arguments for and against the usage of both of these engines, but before this video starts, my man, you already know the drill. Friendly reminder to smash the like and subscribe button. There we go, I know you can do it, and with that out of the way, let's jump right into it. So first of all, let's discuss the bestial monsters. Everyone knows them, but not everyone really loves them. We've got Magnamot, Druid's Worm, Saronir, and now the new Baldrick, Welcome to the Family. These cards are at worst DD Crows, which is already pretty good, and on top of that, they summon themselves on the field, but at best, they kind of do a lot more than that. They are big level 6 bodies, which means you can easily turn them into Beatrice or Wallow Fodder or anything else, really. The biggest issue with them is that they only banish light and dark monsters, so they actually underperform against other attribute-based strategies. And that's a big problem if you're playing against a deck like Ashtira, which really doesn't care about the bestials. Furthermore, they do nothing against the shifter decks such as Flunderies and Exorcister because they can easily stop cards from going into the graveyard, either with Shifter or Dimensional Fisher, Macrocosmos, or whatever else. And again, they do conflict with the Kishtiras because they're going to be summoning monsters on turn 0 and by the time you start your first turn, you already have monsters on the field and unless your opponent actually cleared them and went neg, your Kishtira monsters are going to be negs in your hand. But yeah, like I said, when the bestial monsters are good, they're very good. They apply so much pressure, a single Magnamote can do so much, and even though it is true that they do kind of worsen the floor level of the deck, they drastically increase its ceiling level. Now for the Kashtira engine. Just like I said before, they're a little xenophobic because they don't really mash well with monsters that can summon themselves on turn 0, so the bestial monsters or even Tier Lament Softness. Because of that, they might actually be a worse addition to your Tier Lament's deck, and also you can't really use them for fusion material, unlike the bestials that you can use for Mud Dragon of the Swamp. However, unlike the bestials, they do increase the floor level of your deck because they're always really good against pretty much any matchup. Whenever you're playing against a control deck that plays a Macrocosmos-esque Floodgate, you can still play because the Kishira monsters really don't care about the graveyard, and if you're playing against a combo deck, you can still do something because they apply so much pressure on their own and they can break boards like crazy. Basically, both Fenrir and Unicorn are arguably better versions of Dino Wrestler Pancratops because they both do something good for you and bad for your opponent. Bad for your opponent because Fenrir can banish a face-up card face down and Unicorn can banish a card from their extra deck face down and good for you because Unicorn can search a spell and Fenrir can search a monster. On top of that, the new support from Photon Hypernova will make Unicorn a one-card combo which will make your deck way better. Unicorn also being a wind means that you can start playing through the Windbearer statue against Flunderies which will make your deck again even better against your bad matchups. So in that context, it's the exact opposite of the bestials. Your bad matchups become better instead of worse, and your good matchups are still pretty decent, but this time you have no hand traps in order to deal with the big combo decks. But yeah, like I said, both of these engines can either be good or bad depending on the situation and the context, so definitely keep that into consideration. And I want to say the major inconveniences can always be mitigated with proper deck building. Anyways, that's pretty much all I had to say for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys very soon. Peace.